What would have happened if the strongest creature in the world, Kaido of the Thousand Beasts, were to join one of the greatest battles in the world, the Summit War of Marineford? The short answer? A massacre that would leave the future of One Piece bleak and never changing. The long answer? Let's get into it, shall we? Disclaimer. The content in this video contains heavy spoilers for pretty much the entirety of One Piece. You have been warned. The world of One Piece is split into three major powers over the series. The Marines, the Warlords of the Sea, and the Four Emperors, or Yonko. The three, like, sit on a shaky scale, keeping the balance of power pretty even Stevens. So despite what it may seem, when all three forces collided in one of the most climactic battles the world has ever seen, the outcome of that battle was surprisingly sustainable. The Marines won, Whitebeard died, and Marshal D for Dickhead Teach immediately replaced his position as a young co before any more lives were lost. Sure, the world was forever changed by this moment, and it set in place the groundwork for all the events of the new era to come. But the balance of power, the order of justice, say the same. As Doflamingo remarks, the ability to say what's right or wrong belongs to the victors, and the victors in this case were the same people that already made the rules. This battle's purpose instead was to show off exactly what kind of regime the Marines are, and to set in place exactly the kind of system that Luffy and Co need to change in the future, but not yet. The Marines are still respected, the world government still rules, pirates will continue to rise, that's what's happening right now. But oh boy, that balance would have somersaulted if a certain scaled Yonko came to Marineford. Let's get timing out of the way first. At what point of the war would Kaido have arrived? We know from the end of the war that Shanks went to stop Kaido about a day before he himself showed up at Marineford. This intervention was the only reason Kaido didn't show up first. So, given that timeline and Kaido's speed being, well, a dragon, we can assume that Kaido would show up at approximately the same time that Shanks did in the manga, if not slightly afterwards. Let that sink in for a second. The war is on its last legs. Marineford is now a graveyard of pirates and marines, wounded, exhausted, or worse. The Whitebeard crew have lost their leader. The marines have fulfilled their objective. The warlords are falling apart. The will to fight is slowly draining. Blackbeard's throwing around black holes and earthquakes like drugs at a concert. Luffy is about one plot armor plate away from death. Shanks' arrival marked the perfect place to press pause on this scene before things spiral, except this time, Shanks doesn't show. Instead, from the sky comes a roar, and behind it, a ship with a beast's flag. A ship with much less peaceful intentions than the red-haired pirates, full to bursting with Zoan fruit users. Now let's talk motive. Why was Kaido here? It's not super clear from the story, but the best guess is that he was there to settle the score with his former Rocks crewmate, Whitebeard. The two have a mutual respect for each other, despite the underlying hatred between them. So Kaido would have liked to challenge Whitebeard in one final battle, except Whitebeard's already dead when he arrives. And what stands there instead is a seething Akainu and a zeha moron waving around the very recognizable devil fruit of his old frenemy. I think it's pretty safe to say that Angry wouldn't do justice to what our fire-breathing friend would be feeling. And all that rage, bloodlust, and battle would direct straight onto Blackbeard and the Marines around him. Before anything else, there's a few very bad things that would happen right off the bat. Starting strong, Kobe would die. Without Shanks being there to protect him, Akainu's fist would have a sweet union with the poor kid's face, and BAM! We have some s'mores to add to Ace's donut. Secondly, and most terrifyingly, Luffy would most likely die too. Shanks remarks that Kobe's few seconds of courage were enough to change the fate of the world, which likely meant those few seconds were enough to give the red-haired pirates time to intervene, ultimately saving the biggest world shaker there, Luffy. Without Ben Beckman there, Kizara would likely land a killing blow on the catatonic Luffy, killing him instantly. It's possible that there are many ways to avoid this. Law, Jinbei, Marco, any number of characters were in the vicinity to defend, but remember, the reason Shanks wanted to stop Kaido from joining the war in the first place was because he was afraid of something catastrophic happening. We already know that Shanks' intuition is clearly strong. He predicted Ace's fiasco with Blackbeard would end badly, and now we know that he also possesses the future sight of advanced observation hockey. So it's not unfair to assume that, in Shanks' scenario of Kaido appearing at Marineford, the worst possible outcome of every event would take place. Right, now let's play a game. What would Kaido do? Thunder Bagua. One giant club to the face and Blackbeard's down. Even Luffy and Gear 4 couldn't stay in a single shot the first time. A pre-time skip Blackbeard with a bag of tricks? No chance. 
His darkness won't stop Kaido's armament colors, and his brand new earthquake abilities without the strength to back them up would barely tickle the beast. Now the main members of Blackbeard's crew spring into action. Burgess, Doc Q, Van Ogre, Lafitte, get ready to do battle. What would Kaido do? Same treatment as Teach. Blast breath. Poof. Bye bye Blackbeard crew. It's been real. The rest of Blackbeard's impel down rescues, including Shiru, sees this and react. What would Kaido do? Well, nothing actually, because these fools will be running the hell away. None of them are tied to Blackbeard in any brotherly sense, and their sense of loyalty isn't exactly reputable. They do the quick math and realize tangoing with a Yonko fresh out of prison just isn't worth it, and nope out of there. This would likely leave old Garp and Sengoku to battle Kaido. Everything else, pacifistas, vice admirals, other marines, etc., would do absolutely nothing against the Yonko, because without the use of advanced conqueror's hockey, the dude's practically invincible. Let's assume that Kaido's brought a bit of his smile fruit army with him. The wave of Zoan users would quickly take out the peanut gallery of weakened marines. This would leave the three admirals, stragglers like Crocodile, and the remnants of Whitebeard's crew to face off against the combined might of the Toby Ropo, and the three natural disasters, Drought, Plague, and Wildfire, in a complete free-for-all. But what about the seven warlords? They'd help the marines in the fight, right? Let's count. Hancock would go berserk and attack whoever killed the love of her life, Luffy, so likely one of the admirals, point one against the marines. Doflamingo would jump at the chance for chaos and immediately join Kaido, especially with his prior connections to the Yonko as Joker. Point two against the Marines. Morio would quickly be killed or taken out by Doflamingo, exactly as he was in the manga. Point three against the Marines. Jimbei's not a warlord anymore and would simply fight alongside the Whitebeard pirates. Point four against the Marines. Crocodile's not a warlord anymore and likely wouldn't fight at all. Point five against the Marines. Mayok has already said that he was only there to fight Whitebeard. Once Kaido shows up, he's peacing out. Point six against the Marines. And Blackbeard's, well, we know what's happened to Blackbeard. So the only person who'd actually fight with the Marines is Kuma, but he's already got his hands full with Ivankov and Inazuma, so whatever he'd do would be limited. With the amount of big names brawling here, who knows how this fight would go? But considering King's Lunarian body, Queen's biochemical warfare, and Jack's rampaging mammoth, not to mention all the ancient Zoan fruits of the Tobi Ropo, the fight's well in favor of the Beast Pirates. So will weaken Kizaru, Akainu, and Okoji fall, but not before laying complete waste to the surroundings, destroying everything around them. The casualty list would skyrocket at this point. But regardless of who makes it out and who doesn't, it's likely that none of the remaining characters will be significant in the later story. Which comes back to Kaido vs. Garp and Sengoku. Honestly, it's a complete dice roll on who wins here. Kaido's mythical Zoan fruit and immense hockey versus Sengoku's mythical Zoan fruit and Garp's immense hockey. With the fact that the two marines are getting older, it's unclear whether this would prevent them from going all out against the Yonko. Although, after certain developments, age really has been shown to be just a number. But what would likely happen is that Kaido would just prolong the battle, wearing them out until the rest of his crew finishes up their fight and joins them. And Sengoku and Garp would simply have too many people to keep track of. Remember, worst case scenario. And in that scenario, the two veterans, inexplicably, go down. So what does this mean for the greater story? This means that the current protectors of justice, the Marines, have been cut down and taken a severe, severe L. And in their place, the might of the Yonkos are now the ruling force of the sea, and at the forefront of it would be the man that got there first, Kaido. This would send the world into a second great age of piracy, but not in the good way. It's not the piracy of exploration, wonder, and travel. It's the piracy of pillage, plunder, and burn. It's a world without order. It's a world without law. Probably literally. It's a world where the world's rules are Kaido's rules, and we know scarily well what Kaido's rules are. Kaido's whole philosophy is that of overwhelming strength, a world of turmoil where the strong get to join him and the weak have their spirits crushed, and a world under Kaido's thumb will be forced to submit to him until all dreams have been flattened to nothing, unable to get up. We've seen Udon prison. Now imagine that was the entire world. Of course, there would be a few sparks of rebellion, Dragon and the Revolutionary Army, the scattered remains of the Supernovas, the other Yonkos, but overall this is a world where the worst sides of piracy come to light. A world of war. A world of kill or be killed. There is no Joy Boy. There are no dreams, only power, and people backstabbing one another for it. So whether Kaido or someone else finds the One Piece or not, it doesn't really matter at that point, because the world will always be in turmoil. 
The Celestial Dragons, the World Government, M, and all the Elders will likely just use the Chaos to create an even more corrupt world order, and any hope for the Drums of Liberation will be gone for good.